Anyway, we are here for a- another round of pentathlon. The long-awaited Dodge versus Skyline. Well, it's actually not that long-awaited because these cars were only just announced quite recently. Let me get out of this. All right. Remember, total score. Remember. Remember. <laughs> ah, they definitely didn't have time to read that. I'll have to type it again. I'll say... Uh, all five rounds wins. Um, goal score, not game score. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Arslan saying, where's your skyline? He didn't realize that it was actually Metsa in the skyline and me in the, in the Dodge Charger, but he should be fully aware now that Metsa is playing the skyline and Arslan is in the Dodge Charger. I'm going to put my money on Arslan here, the more experienced 1v1 player. And although this is a pentathlon, not a regular 1v1, a lot of the same skills do um, translate between game modes. Of course, drop shot is a lot about 50-50s and just getting the ball past your opponent. Where does, what does that remind you of? Of course, that does remind us of 1v1 outplays. You just need to get the ball past your opponent and then to put it into an open outplay. Well, in drop shot, most of the time, you just need to get it past your opponent and that's it. It's easier. Quick save by Oslon just stopping that one off in the ground. The difference about the, or the biggest difference about drop shot for me, uh, compared to regular, besides the fact that you're not trying to score a goal, you're just trying to hit the floor, is the recharging boost. And I'm sure you guys would have been fully aware of this. It's a very, very different metagame. You've got to never, if you can avoid it, feather your boost in drop shot. Because as soon as you feather that boost, it cuts the recharge for a couple of seconds. I'm not sure what the exact timing on it is, but you have to be super careful not to as you're just driving around the field, you know, drop little bits of boost in, in there every now and then. Because look how long it takes for that recharge to start up again. If you have been boosting, and this is an ultra damage, nothing Metsa can do short of spawn directly beneath the ball, which is outside of his control. But for anybody who's new here wondering how does a pentathlon work, as I was explaining in the chat as the game was starting, uh, the total score between all five rounds wins, and that's goal score, not game score. So you can lose the first three rounds, which are just drop shot, ice hockey, and hoops. You can lose all three of them by two goals each. Let's say you're down by six going into the fourth round. But then if you win the rumble round by eight, and then you just win the normal round by one, you're going to win the, the overall um, pentathlon by three. And that's the, thing that that's the thing that matters. The reason I chose to do that is, of course, that I want there to be more comeback potential as you go later into the game. Otherwise, if we made it by round score, it would be over a lot of the time before we get to see the fifth round, and we would only get to see three or maybe four um, rounds on average. Which is just not as good. And of course the reason we ordered them like this is because then this is more likely to get the big, the large goal swings, which can come in regular 1v1 and also rumble 1v1. We'll, let, we'll leave them till later. That's at least what I thought was going to happen. But everybody who saw Scrub Killer versus Fairy Peak Ice Hockey round, we've all been made very aware by Fairy Peak that you can win in ice hockey by huge scores. 1-0 finally arrives in the drop shot round. I don't know if this is just a recent patch demo or if this demo is legit. Uh, it looks like it was semi-legit. Metza was kind of landing on top of Ocelon there, but either way, I'm pretty sure the ball would have made it into the net before Ocelon reached it. Well, oh, that's smart by Ocelon. Metza dangerously leaving the ball on the face-off. Ocelon almost sniped the open net, or the open hole, if you will. It's a good start for Metza. I, I think he, he needs a good start because once it gets into the uh, the final round, I could see Ocelon winning by a fair margin. That being said, if Metza, if Metza Norris can avoid giving away too many kickoff goals, I think his defense is stronger than his offense in 1v1. Oh my goodness, that's close to an equalizer. Metza is doing a good bit of damage. He should have avoided that demo. And this might just be a goal. Good shot by Ocelon. It's going to bounce up, though. That's so unfortunate. Metza is still filing on the pressure. Can Metza hold Ocelon to nil here? It's very important not just to win the round, but to keep your opponent on as low score as possible. And Metza, like I said, his defense is very solid. So is his uh, ground shooting. It's just his, if I had to pick one 
thing that he sometimes falls flat on. It's his dribbling. Oh, that's a good buff by Arsenal. But again, all he gets is the rim off the hole. So unfortunate. But credit to Metza. He's making this very difficult for Arsenal to find an opening. That is an ultra damage ball. It falls on the midline, though. Another very, very close call for Metza Norris. Ocelon gets to keep away. He might not even need ultra damage here. He's going to go for a goal. Does he get it? No, the ball's going to bounce off three times before going in. If that had somehow found its way to the sidewall and rolled up, Ocelon would have been so sad. Look at that. It somehow made it all the way to the back before dropping in. Mets are still in an advantageous position. And I could definitely see this going to overtime. Mets has main objective now is just to try and stop Ocelon from doing any damage to his side until these 20 seconds are over and then he can maybe start to work towards winning the game this is a great position though he might just go for this right now he has gone for it and got done some damage Ocelon has to sharply cut this if he wants to get it into a damaging position it doesn't look like it's going to happen or oh, Metza might be able to keep it up himself this is very difficult to score from. And Ocelon's instead got ultra damage. If this drops, it does count. Metz is back in the business, though, and that's going to mean that we go to overtime. That ultra damage is now wasted, completely gone. And although it's a little bit closer in terms of the damage, Ocelon's slightly ahead, in fact. But that does not reflect on how much damage is currently on the floor. I think it took Ocelon more damage to get his first goal than it took Metza for him to do his one. That might be a bit about even now though. The only difference is that Metza has got a larger hole, much much larger hole to aim at, but that might be about to change as Ocelon's opened up a big one and he shoots into it, hits the post again. Has he overextended? I don't think he has. He's back trying to stop Metza. Look, Metza's trying not to feather that boost. Both players very low on boost. They're trying to let it recharge. Completely different boost management metagame in drop shot. Ocelon was so close to winning just moments ago. Metza might be going for a fake here. Yes, he is, and it's going to work. What a play by Metza. He just lets the ball roll off the front of his car into the gaping hole. Ocelon did not keep it out in time. Really smart play by Metza Norris. He's going to go up by 1-2-1 one, one in the lead after round 1. Of course, this is the round that we always get the least goals in. So, no danger yet for Ocelon. Snow Day, let's stick it on... I think Manfield Snowy is just the best by far out of the snowy maps. I don't know about you guys, but it was 2-1 for Metz and Oris, I believe. It means 1-2 on this. It's even got that... Do you guys see the ambient noise of the snowy breeze in the background. I don't want to turn up the ambient noise too loud. There we go. Great kickoff by Metz. And now, are we going to see a wealth of kickoff goals for either of these players? It's worth mentioning that although the skyline looks like it could be um, a flat car hitbox, it's one of those hitboxes that I, you wouldn't be surprised if Psyonix gave it a flat car hitbox, but you equally, equally wouldn't be surprised if they gave it like an Oxane hitbox. It's somewhere in between, and that makes perfect sense of what they did do with it. It's a hybrid hitbox car, same as I believe Masamune, Venom, X Devil, and all those, it's all similar, um, where it's not as tall as an Octane or a Merc, but it's also not as flat as uh, things like the Dodge Charger, Batmobile. Oh my goodness, what is that flick by Ocelot? I don't think he knew that was coming. I have no idea how that happened. It was a really difficult position to utilize anyway. This is turning into more of what we expect from Snow Day with the ball, or the puck rather. Just sticking to the wall. What is this from Ocelot? He's juggling the ball. <laughs> I've never seen that, but we're looking at the play by Ocelot. Holy cow. Just gains all the territory in the world by keeping it up. And then perfect volley. That is incredible. Mets and Aris has got to be thinking that Ocelot is going to have his number on this map if things like this are going to keep happening. That was unbelievable by Aussie. He might have a chance for a kickoff goal. Turns out the puck is too hard to manipulate. And it is going to stay safe for the time being. Ocelon is having his way with Metzenoris when it comes to demos, but is he going to be able to get the puck to turn in time? It's such a heavy puck compared to the regular Rocket League ball. 
And that's it. Taking a leaf out of Aussie's playbook. He's going to go up high here. It seems like a smart thing to do because it is, of course, harder to counterattack with the puck because the puck is heavier. Harder to get that counterattack going quickly. So why not use the wall and uh, try to get the ball to or the puck to fall off? I'm saying ball all the time. Get the puck to fall off the wall into awkward to defend positions. Metsa does equalize. Did well here. Tripping up Ocelon. Won the little tussle that they had in the midfield. This is gonna be this is gonna pave the way for a Charger versus Skyline rivalry. Uh, who do you guys think is gonna take it? Charger or Skyline? I did put my money on the on the Charger at the start here, just mo mostly because of the driver. But also, it is worth mentioning, I think it is a slightly easier to play car, at least when I tried them both myself. The the Skyline in my very first game playing it, it felt great, but then after a while it st it started to feel a little bit more difficult to get power shots with. Uh, whereas the Charger was easy to get the power with. This is unbelievable by us. I've never seen this before. He's just carrying the ball along the wall and it's stuck to him like glue. He's decided to go for a side flip shot, almost went in. Metza was aware of the danger. He's maybe going to try this wall dribble himself. This is unbelievable. I've never seen this before. A wall carry with the ice hockey puck. I wonder if there's a way to after you've started this wall carry, to then get a shot off that same wall. If somebody can master that, it will be, hard, be so hard to defend, because if, if, if at any point you, you know, try to close the distance and make a challenge to a player who's on the wall, who's carrying the puck, then they can of course just pop it up the wall, they can um, try to take it down the wall. There's, it's it's going to be really hard basically to stop them in their tracks without completely catching them off guard. Oh my goodness, what shot by Metza? How on earth did he get that much speed on that? You can, of course, get some cheeky pinches with the with the puck that are not possible with the ball. Very close range ground pinches where you just dodge into the floor. I do think that, as Floris is suggesting in chat, ceiling shots are very, very useful with the puck. Not, maybe not even following through with a ceiling shot, but just lobbing the ball into a position like we just saw Metza do. Just getting the ball moving, or getting the puck, sorry, moving as quickly as possible down the line, and then just as you reach the opposition corner, ramp it up into that um, ceiling, because it's much harder to get a clean read on what the puck is doing uh, than it is to get a read on what the ball is doing. And then once you get into a center ball position, it's so easy for the defender to accidentally own goal. But this is exactly what I expected ice hockey to be when I started this pentathlon format. The Fairy Peak domination of Scrub was not what I expected. I, I really expected it to be a much lower scoring game, which is what we're seeing. And Metza in that low scoring game is taking the lead. Look, at this is what I mean. It's hard to get a good solid clear because if the puck is arcing in front of your net and it's doing all these twists and turns, getting a power hit on it is much, much harder than getting a power hit on the ball, which just moves location through the air, not orientation as well. well obviously, it does move orientation. It's just that it doesn't matter which way the ball is facing. It looks the same from every direction. Can Ocelon find a way back into this one? Metza starting strong. This is certainly the easiest format for a comeback. But Metza, credit to him, he's really figured this out. He's gone for the carry, and you see exactly why it is so difficult to challenge in that position. Ocelon just gets completely blocked as Metza refuses to dodge. Both these guys seem to have kickoffs figured out pretty well. They're not going for the dodge on face-off that uh, Scrub was failing with repeatedly. But Metza might have overstepped his mark here. This is a big misplay because now he's let Ocelon into the game by one goal. And of course, it doesn't matter as much for this round. He doesn't care uh, about conceding this goal in the context of this game going to overtime. But that goal could mean a lot later on if Ocelon starts to creep back into the series in the latter rounds. I guess overtime is relevant because if Ocelon can get one more goal, he has a chance then to score another and steal this round. But Metza has put it on target. Not going to be in time though. Two or three two this time. And Metza now leading by two overall. A very, very small, small lead for Metza, something that he has to be super careful of. He can't get overconfident just because he's won two rounds. 
because he might lose this lead and some. Even in one round of hoops, it's now getting into the game modes where large scores are very, very possible. Hoops, of course, is a game mode where defending can be extremely difficult if you're against an aggressive opponent who likes to go for bumps. We saw that in the Scrub Killer vs. Fairy match where Scrub was down by, I think, 12? 12 goals going into this hoops round. Coming out of that hoops round, I think he was only down by 7. He brought it, brought it back by 5. Can Ocelon do a similar thing here? First question, of course... How is he going to deal with this face-off? This is a, the hardest face-off in the map. You've got to save some boost or you don't reach the ball. You cannot boost from start to finish there. Or you do not reach the ball at a high enough altitude. Or will also be able to get his pops working. He's got the boost advantage, but Metz has defended his first attack. Low arcing shots are something to look out for. Or air dribbles. Ocelon tried to go for a jump reset on the ceiling there. And then fly back down to rebound it in. Wasn't able to execute, but good try. Bit predictable there by Metza. Ocelon. Seems from the beginning that air dribbles are going to be his main source of pressure. High pop is not a bad idea. This just gives him some time to get that boost steal. And of course, counterattacks are much harder to execute in hoops than pretty much any other game mode because it is hard to quickly get the ball from defense into the opposition goal. Of course, it's not hard to get it into their half at all. Regular shape map, just a goal that is different. Metz with a good pop. Ocelon has managed to somehow correct his flight path, but is that enough? It looks like it won't be Metz punishing the bad clear. Ocelon did well to save this in the first place, but he hit it way too hard. Perhaps a a light touch and then a pinch on the back wall would have been a better move. That's a good kickoff. Has he got the pop? Yes, he does. Ocelon might have to try and save this. And he fails on the save. Metz is up by two. And he's up by four overall, remember. Need to see what did Ocelon do here. Double jump would have saved it, but he dodged forward. Certainly an unforced error there. It would have been... An advantageous spot for Metz and Oris regardless, it is worth mentioning. Metz might have been going for a wall shot there. Not the conventional wall shot, but a shot where he tries to bounce it off the wall. But the fake is going to take Ocelon out of the game momentarily. Ocelon certainly on the ropes at the start of the hoops round. Good save, but not a clear ball yet again. Metz causing a lot of problems. And that's a great shot. Another good save, but is it going to be enough? No, it isn't. Ocelon can only keep the ball out for so long. And Metza really enjoyed that one. <laughs> the triple ha in the chat from Metza Norris. Just trying to rub some salt in the wound. He's off to a great start here. Ocelon is going to have his work cut out for him in the final rounds. Oh my goodness, we've got mating season in October. <laughs> I didn't know that Chargers were attracted to Skylines. But I mean, taking a look at how attractive the Skyline is as a vehicle, it's not that surprising to have mating season this late in the year. <laughs> They're aiming for that summer baby. They want a baby in June, Metsonaris and Ocelon. They want a summer baby. <laughs> Notice that they could have probably backed out of that sooner. Ocelon thought, this is actually pretty nice. I know I'm five goals down. I need a comeback, but... This is quite comfortable. <laughs> he decided to sit on top of Metz's car for a little while. Air dribbles from Metz are looking threatening. This is so hard to save. Ocelon, the only real way for him to get that ball to safety is out the front of the hoop. Metz are doing a good job blocking that. What would the baby of the Charger and Skyline be? Um, The Skyger? Or the... I don't know. The Charline? The Charline sounds a bit better. Miss on the open net by Ocelon. Of course, open nets on hoops are harder than regular open nets, but still open nets nonetheless. And is Ocelon's air dribble going to be as good as Metz as it is going to be every bit as good as Metz flounders in trying to save it? It's just so hard to both keep the ball from falling into the goal while also getting it away from the player who's tracking it. Charge line. 
I don't know, a char charge line. There's too much of the charger in there. If you're only going to take one syllable, uh, well, I mean, three letters, uh, four letters from the skyline, you got to only take four from the charger as well, right? Char line? Maybe you guys do like charge line, though. It's not terrible. Not a terrible idea. Rayman RH, thanks for the two months, by the way. I do appreciate that. It's another open net for Ocelon. Has he got the speed? No, he doesn't, and he doesn't have the accuracy either. You see how it's so difficult to counter-attack on hoops. If that was any other map, Ocelon would have just slammed it, and it would have been a goal. But in hoops, he needs to control it, and then also get it up and over the rim before Metza recovers, and Metza is very fast at recovering. We recently discovered today that when he's not playing the Skyline, he has in fact discovered the thinnest wheels in the game, or at least he, th he thinks they're the thinnest wheels in the game. I, I don't remember the full name, it's like WW3 something. They're the wheels that came out with the Bone Shaker. And I'm starting to think that that might be why Metz is such a fast player, is because he's found the thinnest wheels. Now Metz are going for a bump, I'm sure, on Ocelon here. Doesn't? He decides not to go for it. I would have loved to see him go for a bump there. Seems pretty low risk. Let's try and box Ocelon into the corner. He does have the lead, and that's a good shot to the front of the rim. The hardest place to save because you can't use the wall. Metza's defense on the wall has been on point so far. Could have gone for a bump there as well. There's opportunities that Metza is letting him pass by to go for bump goals. And we all saw how effective they could be in the Scrub versus Fairy matchup. That is the really, really what gave Scrub such a great comeback with so many bump goals in hoops. Also, on continuing to struggle to find his shooting accuracy. He's missed quite a few shots, missed quite a few flicks. And that's just not good enough if he wants to make the comeback happen. Is he going to dip down to a negative five aggregate score? Certainly not an insurmountable lead, but not a comfortable deficit, even for a player as good as Ocelon. That looks like where we are destined for, unless Metza can and I'll save this. Looks like he won't be able to get it further than far enough clear. Might have been in regardless of Ocelon's dunk. Finally, a good pop by Ocelon there. Metza didn't get the double touch. And a good finish by Ocelon. That, that ball might have actually bounced up in the air. Looking at it the second time, it may have popped high into the air. That would have been awkward for Ocelon to score. So Metza would have been comfortably able to recover in time. Good attack by Metza. He knew Ocelon was... Trying to keep the ball in the air. Goes for the early interception. This is going to hit the grind now, and it is another win for Metza, this time by one. He is just consistently going one better than Ocelon in every single round here. So he's up now 9-6. to six. At least I think it's 9-6, right? Yeah. That's correct. Uh, what did Metza say there? I didn't read it in time. Can I read it in here? This is going to be fun. I click my left stick every five seconds or something. I'm not sure what Metza means by that. Oh. Maybe Metza deciding to give a goal to Ocelon here. Um, I didn't watch to see what happened. Or maybe one of them was winning 1-0. Maybe they've decided to go for a fully honorable rumble mode. Or rumble... Uh, goals only. We'll see. This should be a goal by Ocelon. Spikes is such a hard thing to defend even with the Haymaker, but it looks like Ocelon's completely lost control. He should have been able to save that if he played it correctly. Or score that. Another Haymaker for Metzenaris. Has he found a way to hack the system and get always Haymaker? Unbeknownst to Ocelon, Metzo is always in control of that situation. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think that Rumble, if we played 100 Rumble games and 100 regular games between, um, you know, pretty evenly matched competitive players, <laughs> but it's uh, not getting the interception that he was looking for, uh, what do you think would have higher scores on average? That's pretty funny. Metza thought he was going to get an interception there, but he just put it in to his own net. Is this the beginning of Metz and Oris's fall? Ocelon's comeback. Yeah, I think I think Rumble would have lower scores on average. I'm pretty sure, because a lot of the a lot of the um, power ups are so good defensively. Oh, what is Ocelon doing? Here? Oh, smart! He's decided to swap Metza way to the side. 
Doesn't work out in the long run, but I can see what he's doing there. I would like to see him commit even harder to that. Jump maybe into the air. You see, the position he put Metza wasn't that bad. He put Metza into the back corner, but not uh, into an unrecoverable place. Of course, he didn't want to take too long doing that. As Metza was about to pull the trigger. But I could see Metza being pretty good at, at Rumble. He's a very smart player. Of course, Rumble is all about creativity. Trying to figure out how to best use the power-ups to your own advantage, and certainly not to your detriment, as we just see from Ocelon. Magnus says he beat Metza in Rumble 9 out of 10 times. So Magnus either rating himself as a Rumble God or Metza as a Rumble Bean, or a bit of both, I'm not sure. From what I've seen so far, Metza's played pretty smart. He misplayed with the grappling hook for the first goal, but since then, starting to eke out a win. This is a great position for Metza. You can ignore the ball and just go past it. Almost guarantee a goal. He's gone a bit far wide, but he should be able to score this. Yes, indeed he will. Ocelon over committing sevenfold. He is not respecting Metza. Of course, he's got to know there that Metz has got some comeback and most of the power up, or some comeback, some power up. And most of the power ups are going to do at least something, even if you're that far away from the ball. Of course, the only ones that won't make effect are really the magnet and spikes, perhaps, or the boomer, I guess. So there's three power ups that Metz could have had there, which wouldn't have stopped Ocelon from scoring. But pretty much every other power up is going to do something. I guess the, um, maybe the storm wouldn't as well. Can Ocelon get this on target in time? Yes, he can. Good job. This time he doesn't overcommit with the freestyle spikes. Exact same interaction that we saw the first time that uh, Ocelon had spikes. We see Metza going for the Haymaker onto Ocelon after he jumps, which is smart by Metza. He's waiting for the jump before pulling out the Haymaker. Of course, you can, in fact, influence the other player's car as well as the ball if they have jumped. I don't think it influences them that much if they're still on the ground. This is uh, most of the time a scoring position for Ocelon. I think he might have missed it, though. Never mind, he's put it top corner. Cutting it very thin was Ocelon. This is a great move, though. Popping it up high and then pulling it back down again. How close was this? Oh, just, just squeaking it into the back post. Well played by Ossi. I didn't think he needed to go for such a crazy maneuver with Metzenoris not putting in an early challenge. But Ocelon managed to calculate it effectively. Is this the first normie goal of the game? Nope. It will get saved. Fortunately for Ocelon, Metza has a pretty good power up to stop this long shot. And Ocelon has revealed his card. Tries to snipe at the bottom corner. Metza knows it's wide and saves his power up just in case Ocelon pulls out another boomer. There's the freeze! What a play by Metza! Ocelon was about to score the open net, but Metza has frozen it solid. Hanging on to this goal lead is Metzenoris. He's up by three because he's won every round by a single goal so far. And now this is perhaps the most difficult power-up to utilize effectively. What is Metza going to do with the player swap? He's got to put his own car in a bad position and then swap Ocelon to his position, which is a bad one. There, that's a pretty good use of it. Metza almost able to work the ball into the goal. That was really smart. As soon as he saw Ocelon about to dribble the ball across his own goal line, he ran to the midfield, getting as far away from the ball as possible. Loving the power-up usage by these guys, for the most part. Metza is saving a very, very valuable on the plunder. He might not even need it. In fact, he doesn't because Ocelon has overstayed his mark yet again. Are we going to see another one-goal victory for Metza? I mean, Ocelon could still bring it back. He is the 1v1 favorite in regular soccer. But he's making it every little bit more difficult for himself. With every passing round, this should be an equalizer, but he might have missed it. Can Ocelon put in the rebound? Surely. No, he's missed it again. Oh, no, and Metza might be able to just put this in. He doesn't go for the ceiling air dribble. He's going to solo play this, and I don't hate that. Not a bad idea. Here comes the delayed air dribble, I'm sure by Metza, and Ocelon has no idea where the ball is going to go. That is really smart by Metza. He waits until the ball is fully within his control, fakes high, goes low. Ocelon is in a really, really tough position. He says in chat that he hates Rumble. He is just not able to get Metza's number in any of the regular or the non-regular maps. Misses on another open net. 
even if Metza wasn't there to save it, that was not on target. 22 seconds left. Metza's waiting for the power up a little bit. Get spikes. Is he going to get a delayed spikes? Dunk? Yes, he is. Oh, my goodness. That's a little bit fortunate for Metza. He started the air dribble before he knew what power up he had. And he's like, oh, spikes. That's kind of useful here. I guess I'll take it. <laughs> That's so fortunate. But, hey, the risky shall be rewarded. Sir Meow, thanks for the prime sub, by the way, before I forget. I do appreciate that. Welcome to the stream today. Hope you're having a good day. Is this going to be the first non-one goal victory for Metza? He's up by three, and Ocelon is in a tough position. He should be able to make it two. Indeed, he will. With a very, very fortunate Magnet appearance. Ocelon's like, oh, for goodness sake, I missed again. The Magnet's like, no, you haven't. I'm here for the cameo. We can put it in together. Yeah, the two-year subscriber badge is the Grand Champ logo, but I think there's still got to be another nine months before that happens, so don't worry. Oh, there was a chance for Ocelon. He got a good, uh, good power-up at the end. Wasn't able to use it, though. Two-goal victory, so that means that going into the final round, it is a five-goal deficit. I'll tell the players uh, what you need. Okay, uh, tiebreaker is whoever wins the last round. Actually, somebody uh, said whoever wins more rounds. Whoever wins... We'll try this. More rounds is the winner. So, Aussie, you need to win by six goals. Just to just to confirm. I don't know um, I don't know if you, more of you guys or less of you guys prefer this tiebreaker, but it was suggested by, um, by someone last time we did this, and I thought that's, you know, seems like a fairly smart idea. We'll give it a go. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Whoever wins the most rounds. I also never, never, you must be a Charger main today. I believe Ocelon could do this. He could totally do this. He's struggling without his Octane, but then again, Metz has an Octane main as well. Both these guys playing an off car, and Metz has had Ocelon's number in every non-standard game mode. Can Ocelon redeem himself? He needs to win by six because Metza has won every other round. So he needs to go beyond tying the game here. I still think it's very possible. Ocelon, a very explosive player, a very great dribbler on his day, but he's struggling with his flicks. He's struggling with his first touch in the dodge charger. There it is again, not able to catch the ball as cleanly as we've come to expect from him. Metza is playing with just as much confidence as we're used to seeing from him in the Octane. He's in attack, in a great position. Misses his flick as well, though. Both players missing a flick, and that is a inside of the post, if I've ever seen one. Is Ocelon going to go up for this? Decides not to, and that's a smart turn away. As Metza would if I had most goals covered. Of course, kickoffs are going to play a big part, but Metza is making this just even more difficult for Ocelon. He needs to Brazil Metzenoris or more if Metza keeps scoring. Swaggy Lemon RL, thanks for the prime sub, by the way. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good day. Can Ocelon do it? He's struggling so far. Metzenoris' defense is not easy to crack. Credit to Metza. His ones game has elevated sevenfold in the last few months. He has made himself into quite the tough competitor in this game mode, taking a uh, game off Devo in a recent tournament. And going pretty close with Sebadam as well. He did, of course, drop the series Sweaty Mix recently in that uh, series, which I called Best 1v1 Player in Finland. Of course, there might be a couple of other Finnish 1v1 players out there who would give the best Finnish 1s players a run for their money. Also on still not able to find the consistency with the flicks. I would love to see him going for more grind shots because, of course, flicks are something that you do need to know the car hitbox very well to be able to execute. And since this is his first ever games, this is his first ever soccer game in the Dodge Charger. He was just gifted it by one of my uh, viewers at the start of this series. So I would love to see him going for more shots. And this is exactly the style of play that could win him a series. He's forcing misplays from Metza. Not going to all in. This is very important that he does not concede. He cannot afford to concede any more goals, really. Certainly not many more goals. He needs to play such a solid game, take all his chances, not give Metza anything back. 
Metza might have just opened the gates for another Oslon goal. Can he find the flick accuracy? No, he can't again. He's missed it. And again, I've, I'm going to echo what I, I've already stated. He just needs to start shooting, I think. Less flicks, more shots from Oslon. Metza has equalized the game yet again, though. He is not letting off the gas. Oslon needs to hit eight to bring this into his favor. Of course, there will be no draws in this game. If Ocelon only wins by five or less, Metza will be the champion. If Ocelon wins by six or more, he himself will be the champion. As it stands, Metza is looking poised to take this, which I think comes as a surprise to me, but perhaps the new car is just proving to be a little bit too difficult for Oslon. That's a great setup, though. He should have a goal here, and he does. He's faked out Metza in the process. Great backboard pop. He knew that Metza was grounded. Hit it as high as he could over the bar. Or not as high as he could. Hit it above the bar without going too high, just so that Metza wouldn't be able to get to the back wall in time to intercept. Now Oslon needs five goals. He's been this in this position before this game. Good challenge, but Metza is equal to it. Is he going to get the early goal? No, he can't. Ocelon looking for the turnover, but Metza refuses to back down. That's really smart play by Metza, turning early, preventing Ocelon from getting the boost in the back corner. Time is ticking down. Still five goals needed for Ocelon. Can he bring it back? It's not looking likely. He's really not in a good spot here. Zero boost to his name. Metza takes the ball to the air. He knows that's where he has the advantage right now. Good interception by Ocelon, but still no boost. This is so painful to watch. He just can't find any boost. He does go all the way back for one. He's had enough of this no boost gameplay. Finally now he gets a little bit of ball control. He uses most of his boost to get it. There's a shot. Not a bad one, but it's not going to be good enough to beat a goalkeeper of Metzenaris' caliber. I'd love to see more early challenges from Oslon. This is way too passive. Metza is just wasting so much time. Approaching the final minute, Oslon needs a goal, if not just to get more kickoff opportunities. Good pop, but Metza should be saving it, and he is. Final minute approaches, still five goals needed. It doesn't look likely, but Oslon brings the bump out of the bag. Can he score? No, he can't, he's missed. At the near post, can he score again? No, Metza's back again. Oh, this is torture for Oslon. He's so close, but he just can't find his shooting accuracy. It's been plaguing him all game long. And he so desperately needs a goal. It just doesn't look like it's going to happen. Metzenaris is up in the air for the rebound. And he doesn't miss those. That is going to be GG. Ocelon needs six goals from this tie game situation. 37 seconds left. Of course, if he'd scored that goal at about 50 seconds remaining after the fake, it would have been possible. Four goals in 50 seconds is doable, even at the highest level, with some kickoff domination. Six goals in 37, I have never seen that before, and we will continue never to see it. As Ocelon's mastery off the charger, we'll have to wait until another day. Metza in the skyline is going to take it. But GG's, Metza did play very well here. This is not all Ocelon beating it. He's had a couple of open net misses here and there. He's had a couple of flip, you know, flick fails. But overall, Metza, great domination of the early rounds. Just very consistent one nil or one goal wins is what enabled him to take this whole series. And he just can't take this one yet. Technically a three all as the game is already over, but we'll let them play it out. Can Metza ace Ocelon is the only question that remains. He has the big advantage here. Looks like the ace is on the cards and there it is. Metza takes every single round. The only round which he didn't win by one goal was the rumble round, which he won by two. And great sportsmanship from Ocelon. He says, well played, Mets. Mets says the GG's. And indeed it was GG's. Great series between those guys. It finished off pretty one-sided. But every single round was very close. There was one goal in every single round apart from the fourth, which was two goals difference. Credit to Metza though. He's looking really, really sharp recently in 1v1. I have to ask him how he's liking the skyline. Because for me, I thought that I, I preferred the charger. The only thing that was... Uh, a weakness when I was playing a charger was it felt like I was a really really small car it felt and that just you know for me going into 50 50s I felt like I was gonna lose because I'm facing up against 
somebody who's in an Octane or a Batmobile, which are much bigger cars, uh, and it didn't look like 50-50 victories were going to be possible. But GG's has been called.